So tell me about yourself as a little guy. Well, I, you know, you never really know, but I got the impression that I wasn't easy to handle. <laughs> From my parents' point of view, I was always full of mischief. Uh, we lived through the Depression, so we lived through hard times because uh, my my father was involved in taking over the estate from my grandfather, and there were difficult times for us in the in the Depression years. We lost uh, most of our property for back tax, but my life was good because my life was this. <laughs> my life was sports. I played all the team sports in football because I was a running back. It was being uh, able to be sh uh, uh, shifty and, and uh, not be easily tackled. In basketball, it was uh, just, I just seemed to have a good long shot. And in uh, uh, hockey, it was, I'm accused of staying in front of the net, <laughs> not back checking. And then I went on and played with the Eskimos, and I played uh, defensive uh, back. What's really left in that picture for your imagination is, did I tackle him or didn't I? You seem to have the angle on him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the angle, but it's questionable. Were you always on track with sports, with politics? And did you ever get off track as a kid? I guess not. No, I was constant. Well, I got off track with girls, like all the rest of us did. Didn't meet my wife till I got to the, to the University of Alberta. What were you like as a student at that time? Well, that's a matter of opinion. I got by, uh, but I was pretty wrapped up in student in sports and student activities, same as high school. And I was a student union president at the University of Alberta, too. Well, I was doing it because I wanted to go into government, and I, I wanted to be involved basically for a number of reasons. I thought that's where the action was. That would be the most interesting career that I could have, is if I could go into government and get things done. I was a person that wanted to get things done. What was it like to be active in politics and still have a family? Well, Jean was the, just terrific. It was because she was so terrific and she could keep the family together. Because, you know, once I became leader of the party and we had no seats, I really had to work the territory. I was going all over Alberta trying to build the party from 65 when I was elected leader to 71 because until I was elected uh, premier, we, I was really working the territory. I had more time once I was elected than I did when we were trying to get elected. Mm -hmm. But when I was elected in the capital we were living right in, in Edmonton, out there in Ravine Drive, it was much easier for me because I, I would come home late, you know, 7 o'clock. Yeah. I'd be the last one to leave the legislative building in most cases. But then I'd drive home and they were all there. And the only thing that was difficult for them is that all their friends had already had supper, but they had to wait for their dad. But other than that, I had more time with them. What do you think when you see this photo? Well, I'm just, just, just going to put my wall. This is a real key photograph, because we elected six, and we became official oppositions. We had a vision. Okay. We wanted to be the leaders in Canada. I mean, Social Credit did relatively a good job, but they were always sort of inward, and we wanted to be outward. We wanted to be leaders in Canada in whatever was happening. Well, this is the fun one. Did you make that sign? <laughs> no, I didn't, but supporters did. A group of Evan supporters went down. A group of Evan party guys went together that night, election night, made this sign up and went down and plunked it in front of the legislature. It was funny. I mean, and the journal, the journal picked it up and that was the front, that was the front page picture. Oh, that's a gem. This is the Western Economic Opportunity Conference in 1973, which Mr. Trudeau called with the four Western provinces. What did you think of Trudeau? Well, he was brilliant. Absolutely incredible mind. Well, I remember once we discussed talking about uh, petrochemicals on a meeting, and he knew absolutely nothing about them. And six weeks later, we met, and he knew as much about it as almost anybody had ever seen. Now, that's something. Doesn't that say something? He mastered the file. He mastered the file. He was amazing. The problem we, he and I had is we had such a different view of Canada. He wanted a, a, a dominant, all-powerful federal government in Ottawa, partly to balance the Quebec thing, and we didn't want that. We wanted the provinces to be strong and contributory because that's the nature of how we saw Canada. It looks like you're being kind of aggressive here. Were you being, <laughs> were you being aggressive yes. there? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'd say we were being aggressive. I mean, the picture says we're being yeah, aggressive. Yeah, I was wondering. Like, maybe it, you just... it speaks for itself. <laughs> yeah. How do you think you fared against him? I mean, you're talking about someone who you now described. Well, the brilliant. Constitution how speaks for itself. Uh, I think we won in the Constitution, frankly. Because if you look at our Constitution now, you can't amend the Constitution without the agreement of the provinces. What that picture to me does is it's a team picture. What this is, that, is me why that, is that important to you? Like, why, well, why? because I'm so opposed to government by individual. It's like playing football. You go into the huddle and you may call the play if you're the quarterback, but you better have, when you go to the huddle, you better have 12 people going well together. I'm a team player, and I think everything I see in 
public life over all these years has been the people that accomplished the most were the ones that did it as a team. What was Trudeau like in that regard? He was not a team player, no. but, but he was so strong and so smart that he could overcome in part that weaknesses. In Edmonton, I still hear people talk about the Lahey years as the time when the power shifted from Edmonton to Calgary. Is no that, way. What would you say about that? I don't agree with it. We moved to Edmonton as soon as we were elected. We set our home in Edmonton. We became part of the community. My wife was very involved in a culture part of it. It's there forever. So you're not lobbying for the head office system of the Calgary? Oh, God, no. No? I mean, that's just dynamite. I mean, it's, you don't do that in politics. Okay. You try to keep an even hand, not an easy. So tell me about the meeting with Sheikh Yemeni. Yeah, in Yemeni. Sheikh Yemeni. And was here, and he was the Saudi Arabian oil, oil uh, minister, and he had come to Alberta to see us. And boy, was he ever smart! And uh, he was the dominant player for many years in in the whole petroleum industry in the world. And he came out to see us, and uh, we got him laughing. Isn't that a great photograph? Oh God, he was smart and well informed. But what got me, and of course the the funny one was the one that was quoted, I think, in your paper, where he looked at me and said. You do have blue eyes. <laughs> what did you think of her? Was oh, I was like very fond of her. How, how, how so? Oh, just because she was so with it. I guess where I was really impressed with her is when she came to Alberta and uh, she wasn't taken over by Ms. Mr. Trudeau. She insisted on in coming to Alberta. She said, I'm not going to go just to Ottawa. I'm going to Ottawa, Edmonton, Washington. When you look back at these photos, do you have a nostalgia for the past, or are you that kind of person? Now that's a good question. Yes and no. I don't. It's, nostalgia implies that you wish you were doing it today. What the, the way I feel about it is, gee, wasn't I lucky to have had such an interesting life? But I'm enjoying my life today too, and you got to move on. And I've watched people, uh, and you've seen them, who can't put it aside. Yes. They can't move to another part of their life. And you know, as you can see walking around that table, that's a pretty active life. Do you think much about legacy, about that kind of issue, or...? Oh, I'm conscious of parts of it. Uh -huh. uh, for example, if uh, somebody comes out or writes about it in a way that I think's wrong, uh -huh. uh, and you know that I've been public about some of the things Mr. Kine did, yeah. you know, I get distressed with that. If some of the people, some people come along and try to change some of the things we did, I get distressed with that. That's why I'm so pleased with the, our new Premier, because he has an entirely different attitude. What do you think of him? Oh, I'm very high on him. And he's, uh, he's got such a good attitude towards the province and its history. And I guess a lot of it is where he comes from. You know, he really comes from almost the perfect place to be a Premier of this province, right there east of Edmonton. I hear some people say that old age isn't for cowards. It's tough business getting old. How are you dealing with it? What's it like to be Well, to I, be, don't uh, think old, old I don't think old, and I don't think old, and I don't act old. I think it's a, a question more of saying, well, you've got to be smarter about it. You don't have the same energy level. Is your goal to keep working until you die? Oh, Just for keep sure. right on going? For sure. I think if there's one word that scares me, it's retirement. A lot of people are scared of death. What's your thought of it? Well, I think it's a pretty natural thing. I just like to hope that uh, I'm not going to be distressed about it. I, mean, I hope I don't have a long period of being ill. So you're hard-headed about it? Yeah, it's a reality, as is the fact that I can't, don't have the energy. The, the key one is always with me. I'm now walking, not jogging. <laughs> That's in my mind.